Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Friday, January 26, 2018. I uh, wanted to do another video on the semiconductors. Now, I, um, if you're watching this, if you've started the video, I would encourage you to watch it. I know I just put out a video on the semis the other day. I just added them as an official trade idea. And if I didn't think there wasn't a, a very large above average potential, um, profit potential to be made in this sector, I wouldn't be doing uh, so much coverage. Uh, if you follow the site for a while, you know when I'm on something, if I see an opportunity, uh, I'll do constant updates, videos, think of the cannabis stocks over the last few years. We've had about three major rallies in those uh, and some, some pretty significant tops, energy stocks, gold, uh, and, and that's how it works. So if I'm engaging a sector, whether it's turned yet or not, uh, I'll, I'll do pretty much extensive analysis and then when the when when the opportunity is gone that's it i might move away from that sector and not talk on it uh for months or years uh move on to the next thing so right now uh i think there's tremendous opportunity this sector has not yet clearly rolled over but uh i'm going to go through this video i'm going to show you uh the history of of similar setups in the sector and easily the vast majority of these stocks are good for you know well into double digit gains we're talking 20 30 percent plus um profit potential on a lot of these trades so the way we're going to do this real quick we'll go through the uh i want to look at the semiconductor equipment and materials sector that's this chart we're looking at right here i'm going to go through about half a dozen of the leading uh, equipment maker and material stocks and then we'll we'll go through about half a dozen or so of the leading semiconductor stocks themselves. Now, <clears throat> the reason I'm looking at the equipment stocks, you know, look at it this way. In the last, well, throughout this bull market, this bull market started back in 2009. Uh, what's led the market? Uh, the NASDAQ 100. What's led the NASDAQ 100? Uh, technology. So tech has by far uh, been the strongest performer, you know, or uh, let's just say one of these strongest sectors, uh, especially the key components of the S&P 500 as well. And then within tech, we know that semis lead technology. The semis are a good proxy for the tech sector. If the semis are doing well, uh, it's an indication that the tech sector is going to be doing well. Then the canary in the coal mine for the semiconductor stocks are the semiconductor equipment and material stocks. In other words, you have stocks, uh, companies like Applied Materials, KLA, C10 Core. They make the, the, uh, the machines and the equipment that make semiconductors. So what happens is when the semiconductor sector, when there is a slowdown, the companies like Texas Instruments, Intel, uh, they're going to all of a sudden, they see that coming, they see the slowdown or anticipate it, they're going to cut back on their orders um, from the uh, equipment makers. So that is, that's something I watch. So we're going to go through those, then we'll get into the tech stocks themselves, we'll look at some of the, uh, you know, potential targets, and, um, you know, this one will either pan out or not. Um, you know, we've had uh, some some good trades over the last few years, and we've had some that were stopped out, some we got into early, some we got in at the right time, they just didn't play out for as deep a correction as I thought, but um, you know, on balance, you know, over the years, uh, I've done pretty good on the semiconductor stocks, and again, the profit potential is much larger than a lot of other sectors out there, so I think it's worth doing this video. All right, with that being said, let's, let's dive into the charts. Uh, as I said, this is a semiconductor equipment and materials sector. Uh, you had a divergent high here, about a seven or so percent correction. You can see the negative divergence. Now we have very powerful, clean separation, like I like to see on the PPO or the MACD, as well as the RSI. You have this divergent high, so we're we're still right up here near the highs. Uh, what stands out to me? I see a big bearish engulfing candlestick right here, a couple big red candles, and uh, although it is much too early to say with confidence the sector has rolled over. In fact, until and unless we break out, uh, break below the primary uptrend line right here, uh, the trend is up. However, I, you know, a lot of my trading style is anticipating trend changes. In other words, catching tops and bottoms. I know a lot of people say it can't be done, but that's, if you follow the site for a while, that's what I do. And sometimes we get in too early, um, and sometimes we, we nail it. And a lot of the big gains are in the beginning. If you wait until all the trend indicators have rolled over, all the trend lines have broken, uh, you're probably already missed out on the bulk of the move. And that's why I like to get in 
get in early. So uh, if you, you know, if you like the old saying, you know, the second mouse gets the cheese, you don't want to get in early, you can certainly wait uh, for that trend line break. Um, or at the very least, as I mentioned the other day, you know, what I'm doing is I've started out exposure to the sector, short exposure, and I will continue to add as the, uh, the, the bearish case case strengthens. So here's some some targets for that sector. But again, this is not an ETF, so you can't really trade this directly. Let's let's look at the charts here. All right. Uh, I'll go through. Here's the holdings right here. And I'm just going to go through the top holdings. These are your big companies. You can see up here, you know, the the top companies, 88 billion, 60 billion in market cap. Then you get down here and and these smaller ones are only, you know, five, two billion. Then you get even under a billion dollars. So we're not going to look at them all. No need. Let's just look at some of the leaders. Here's ASML. And what I see here is we had, you know, uh, we had a divergent high here that played out for a little correction. We had a divergent high right here, and it did play out for a, a pretty decent correction. You know, I use log scaling. It may not look like much, but that's almost a 9% drop right there uh, on the break of this bearish rising wedge pattern, that trend line. We had a, if you zoom in, a breakdown back test. Now, this is, this is... <sighs> appears to me to be a blow off top you know volume patterns are indicative of a buying climax this last thrust up we had a breakdown in a near vertical rally um we're extremely overbought you just look at where where the stock how the stock performed before when we we're overbought um not one of my favorites as far as an individual setup but i do think this one's coming back in and you can see recently we had a big bearish engulfing candle here uh let's see what happens going forward but i see more downside in this one look at the ppo starting to roll over at high level and by the way, I, I, I went through each of these stocks just to check because remember, remember we're in earnings season, so uh, you got to watch out if you're trading any individual names. This one looks like they just reported, so re earnings are out of the way. And so far, really, uh, you know, we've seen the stock go nowhere. I think they reported about a week or so ago, if I'm not mistaken. There's Applied Materials, uh, another of the big ones. Applied Materials uh, has not yet reported. They're scheduled to report on February 14th. So we have a, a few weeks before this one reports. And what I, what I could see happening here, I'll point out these divergence. We had divergences there. Uh, here were some corrections. You can see everything on the chart. But what I think is going to happen on this one, or what I would like to see, let's just say that, is uh, pop it up here, uh, make a marginal new high. You can see here I've drawn these yellow lines, or what I refer to as potential divergence. So if we get that, see we had this little pop up here one day and then we got sold back down. If we take that out, uh, we'll have a divergent high. Now most of a lot of these semis have now already put in divergent highs. So we don't need divergent highs on each and every one, but it would it would help uh, to see that happen. Either way, I think the upside on applied materials is limited. At bare minimum, I have a high degree of confidence this stock is going to see that 48.15 level in the coming weeks to months here. And again, we have about three weeks till they report, so you might not see any firecrackers and applied materials unless a sector rolls over. You know, from where we're at now, that represents a drop of about 15%. If we make a marginal new high here in a few weeks, they pop up on earnings and then drop, you're talking about a 25 plus percent drop. And I can certainly see more downside potential in the, in the chart. Here's a weekly chart on applied materials. Uh, this is shows you the last time we had a divergent high in this stock was back in, uh, looks like here in early 2015. You can see the divergent high, you can see a trend line. From there, the stock fell 45%. So guys, the point I'm trying to impress is, this isn't like trading utility stocks where, okay, maybe you're gonna, you'll get five, 10% on a swing trade over a few weeks, maybe a little dividend there if you hold it for six months. These are stocks you can make easily if you get the move right. Uh, returns on um, both long and short in the um, you know how well into the double digits. And you look at this price channel. This is very long in the tooth. This ascending price channel, and you have negative divergence here. Uh, it's just a matter of time before this one cracks. And when it does, um, I would see nothing less than you know 20 plus percent drop. And again, the point I'm trying to impress here as well by going over the equipment makers is if they roll over, almost certainly the semis are going to roll over as well. Next up, Lamb Research. This one just reported, so earnings are out of the way. 
uh, you can see these, you know, series of divergent highs, corrections, sharp corrections. There was a nice bearish rising wedge. I believe this one was pointed out back then, negative divergence. And we actually just put in another divergent high. I don't have it drawn out here yet, but we can show you. We have roughly an equal high in price. You can see there. And negative divergence down below. So, uh, so you know, it's very common to see a series of divergent highs like we had here. Divergent high number one a correction and then an extension of those existing divergences and another correction and that's what we're looking at here however most importantly we're dancing on these primary uptrend lines you can see these uptrend lines that come off of the lows and any correction from here any significant correction will take out that trend line and uh, you know up until then we just had corrections as we got away from the trend we got a little extended you had corrections uh, and they were certainly you know very profitable to swing trade but that just took us back down to the trend line now this trend line is ripe for a breakdown on if these divergences play out the way that that I would expect they would and um, you look at a weekly chart and this is what I'm trying to impress here the, the, these game potentials we've had this is 10 years of price history weekly chart we've had three divergent highs over that time at least three that I have marked here and uh, you can see the three clear ones you had negative divergent here 47 percent correction and I'm talking from the highs to the lows uh, so there was your divergent high uh, lamb research fell 47 percent we had a series of divergences here, divergent high one, prices flattened out, made an equal high. So there's divergent high number two, and that was followed by a 25% correction. Doesn't look like much because I use log scaling here, you can see, um, but those are big gains. Now look at this very steep, very extended uptrend line. Another thing is just, you know, the... <laughs> You know, all these charts just jump out to me. Look at look at the, the duration of these rallies. You can see, you know, they go a few years, these trends. Here's a few years, you get a correction. Here's a few years. They're all about equal in duration. So you can see this one's getting long in the tooth. And, and then uh, we're right on a super well-defined uptrend line. Look how many reactions here on this weekly chart. So what you need to see on LAM Research is a weekly close below this trend line. And at bare bones minimum, I'm looking for from the highs, a drop of about 32% down to this 140 level. Um, so yes, sell signal still pending. Yes, the trend is up. But uh, I think, uh, and I, I know this to be true with semis, usually when they kick off a correction, it starts out with a bang. So if you wait you know, for all these stocks to be below trend by that point in time, you've probably missed out on 10 to 15 percent or more of the move. And, uh, you know, if you want to wait for that, uh, most certainly can. Uh, just remember, after an initial thrust down, you usually get a kickback rally. And that would be the point that you want to short if you don't, if you haven't already established a position in any of these stocks. But again, these are the equipment makers. A couple more, and we'll wrap these up and then get to the individual semis. Uh, here's another big one, KLAC. KLAC just reported yesterday. Um, we had a divergent high here. You can see this. You know, Again, here's a chart, daily chart. Divergent high, 14% correction. Divergent high, 20% correction. Divergent high. Um, we had a divergent low down here, and that was a time to go long. So I see no reason uh, that this divergent high won't play out like the rest of these with a correction, you know, measured in the double digits. And so far off the highs, we had that little spike high there. If I can grab it, uh, we've only dropped about not even 10%, right about close to 10%. And uh, we need to take out this uptrend line, and that'll then bring us down here uh, to my minimum target, about 101.36. So that's KLAC on the daily time frame. There's what it looks like on the weekly. Uh, we had this uptrend line off the lows here back in uh, early 09 late 2008 actually is really where that uh, rally kicked off and you know from there it fell uh, goodness try to measure that out that was a correction about 45 percent um, so here's our trend line now we've sliced through it a little bit I can probably clean this trend line up like this so there's this is what we're looking at now and we do have uh, negative divergence on the weekly time frame. I really like to see that. And we're, you know, when I'm looking at the weekly charts, this helps me differentiate between uh, a, a, a shorter term swing trade. And I, if I have time, I'll get to that in a minute. We had a swing trade on socks recently on the last breakdown. It was a 10% correction in SOXX, the ETF. Uh, that was pointed out step by step on the 60 minute charts. And however, 
that didn't morph in, nor was there evidence at that time for, um, uh, you know, a, a, a multi-month swing trade. That was just a quick pullback trade. But now when you see all these trend lines break, this will be a at least a multi-week, if not a multi-month swing trade, uh, you know, with uh, downside potential measured well into the uh, double digits there. Uh, again, it's these divergences. It's the proximity of these trend lines. The fact that we're pinching up towards the apex of these wedges, rising wedges usually break down, you know, give or take around 70% towards the apex of the wedge. Uh, so we're getting towards those sweet spots. Okay, I'll have to pick up the pace here a little bit to try to get through all these. Uh, so I maybe cut back a little bit on the details, but you can see here, here's a OLED, Universal Display. They just reported, I think, last night. Um, no? OLED. No, they're scheduled to report February 22nd. Sorry about that. Um, however, they broke they broke down. Look at this. Look at this move off that high. There was a divergent high. Look at that impulsive selling. Boom. Breakdown. Uh, we closed below that trend line yesterday, and so far today we're following through on the downside. So this is a legitimate breakdown. If you're if you're leery to short the sector, um, but you want some individual names, this one's it looks good to me. February 22nd, that gives us almost a month before earnings, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, there is some support here, and we hammered off today about 157.62. You can see that that was that previous reaction low, but uh, I think this one heads a lot lower over time. My preferred swing targets down here, 107.56. So just from where we're at right now, uh, if you're willing to give it some room, maybe even a back test. Uh, there's about a 35% drop. So a back test of the wedge could happen anywhere here. Maybe, maybe not. But at the very least, look for a break, a solid break below today's lows. And that would then open the door for the next move down. Um, and then you just have to watch out, you know, when it's coming up on earnings, decide what you want to do, whether you want to hedge that position, close it, or ride, ride it out through earnings. Uh, a couple more, and then we'll move on to the individual semis. Um, IPGP. Uh, just nice, very well-defined uptrend line. Now we're far from that trend line now, but here's my point. Just to get down to that trend line, that's about a 13% drop. Here's a divergent high. You have a bearish, clean bearish crossover in the PPO. You have negative divergence. Uh, you know, this is one I think you can short here. If Even if you're just targeting a move down to that trend line, there's 12%. Use a 3 to 1 risk reward ratio. That means you're allowing yourself a 4% upside you can go uh, set a stop that would be just above those recent highs there you go um we really don't have any type of sell signals earnings on this one february 13th keep that in mind here's a weekly chart i don't have anything annotated on the weekly chart let's go to the next and final equipment maker uh, equipment and materials this is ter teradyne uh here is a bearish rising wedge we had a wedge overthrow and then a breakdown that one from that from the highs fell about 18 or so 19 percent and here's another trend line we breached it briefly but that set up this secondary uptrend line that i have right here and they come in together so there's your sell signal you need to break below here an impulsive break but everything that i like to see clean negative divergence bearish crossover confirming that divergence uh, and downside i don't have targets listed but i can tell you right now my first target would be there about 36.50 Okay, now what we're going to do is real quickly go through the um, the top components of SOXX, the Semiconductor ETF, and I've sorted these. These are going by market cap and descending order. So the biggest, uh, largest semi by market cap is TSN, Taiwan Semi, uh, TSM. Uh, it's a $228 billion company. Uh, what I see here, this one just reported, so earnings are out of the way. It looks like January 19th, I believe they reported. Uh, so we had a little pop on earnings. You can see that, and they faded that. And this is what I'm seeing, and this is what I think we'll see. I think we'll see this with Intel today as well. Uh, you have this pop. Uh, a lot of people bought in on the great earnings, but all of a sudden they faded that. So pretty much all the gains, the post-earning gains have been faded. I can see the PPO rolling over here. Uh, negative divergence, you can see down here on the RSI, almost had divergence here on the PPO, but we are we are looking at a uh, the PPO rolling over. And let's see if what I have on the weekly chart. Oh, God, I love this chart. Uh, here we have a divergent high back in 2013, followed by a 23% correction. Here we have, fast forward to 2015, divergent high, 33% correction. 
um, that took out that trend line there. Then we came up here, we set up a new trend line from that point. I have two alternative trend lines. You can see, if you look closely, a purple trend line and a white one. The white one just captures that, that overshoot, that large candle. This purple one captures a few more reactions. Either way, they come in very close together. Uh, when in doubt, I always give it the uh, benefit of the doubt and, and use the lower of the two trend lines looking for a breakdown. But here's one that I would get ahead on. TSM, like I said, already reported. We had a divergent high right here, negative divergence. You can see it here. As, so, as soon as this PPO rolls over, that will be confirmed. Uh, so uh, that's one that I think is, uh, and again, one of the largest semis. So when that one rolls over, uh, chances are the sector is rolled over. Here's Intel. Uh, Intel uh, had earnings, and they're up big today, and they're you know pretty much I don't want to say single-handedly lifting the semiconductor sector today, but by far, you know, most of the gains in the semi-ETFs are attributed to Intel today, up about 9.5%. And I actually like to see this. Um, sure, I shorted yesterday. I have a short position, which I'm ready to add to and may even do so today. Um, but what I like about this is up until then, we had a small divergent high here. Now we have a uh, even steeper divergent high. You can see this. Uh, so as soon as Intel reverses, which I think will happen soon. Um, I'd love to see this today's candle faded. That will be a pretty powerful sell signal if prices drop back below today's lows. Uh, and especially if we go on to fill that gap, that will have confirmed this steep, very steep negative divergence. And um, uh, let's take a look at the weekly chart on this one real quick. Uh, there it is. Divergent high back here in 2012, 34% correction. Divergent high back here. The Intel was a short. I pointed out this inverse. I mean, not inverse. This is a head and shoulder stopping pattern. There was your neckline. Broke down 34% correction off this divergent high right here. We had a divergent high right here, 14% correction. And now we're waiting. Um, this one's almost confirmed. We need to see this PPO roll back over. It recently crossed and it's flattening out right now. This will soon be, soon be a, a confirmed divergent high on any downside in Intel. And uh, again, that's one of the industry's leaders. So uh, let's watch that one closely. Uh, nope, that's not what I wanted. I wanted NVIDIA next. NVIDIA reports on February 8th. Uh, big divergences building here on the daily time frame. You can see that. And then when we look at the weekly chart, oh man, this one has a lot to fall. Big, powerful negative divergences building here, wedging up. You can see we broke down back to, well, we haven't back tested the trend line yet, but we have, we're just uh, skimming along this uptrend line here. Uh, you can see the negative divergences. So uh, again, February 8th. So we may have to wait a couple weeks uh, to see this one roll over. A lot of these stocks will tend to hold up into earnings unless you start to see some downside momentum in the sector. Texas, uh, Texas Instruments, excuse me, TXN, they just reported, broke down, gap down below this, this uptrend line here. So far, we remain below it. This is actually bear flagging action. Um, if you put a line chart, you would actually see, here, let me show you what I'm looking at here you have an impulsive move down so on a line chart it would look that way when you have a gap you don't see the prices but that's what that is and now this is flagging type action here either a bearish pennant or a bear flag uh, so if we do break down soon an impulsive breakdown then you'd expect uh, that flag to play out something like this and probably come take us to these uh, this support level right about here about the 100 level in, in texas instruments uh, let's look at the weekly chart real quick see what we see Oh, uh, the last time, well, I should correct myself. We haven't been this overbought in at least a decade, if not ever in Texas Instruments. So here's your extreme overbought reading on the RSI. The last time we even came close to that was back here. We were very overbought back in 2011. That was also a divergent high as well, at least on the PPO, not on the RSI. That was followed by a 34% correction. We're extremely overbought now. And... Um, I expect the same thing to happen. Pretty bearish candle right there on the weekly chart. At bare minimum, we're going to come visit the bottom of this channel, I believe. And I think ultimately we'll, we'll pick up and connect to this longer term uptrend line right here. Extend that for you. And uh, if if that holds, great. It might be a good time to go long. If not, we could work our way all the way back down to about the $60 level on Texas Instruments. Okay, two, two to go. Qualcomm, uh, this one hasn't reported yet, January 31st, so looks like we're going to report early next week. Uh, I could just 
you know, my mind's eye, I see this one playing out this way. Positive earnings report, a little gap up here. Look at these previous reaction highs should certainly act as resistance. We have a lot of resistance here, several highs, uh, reaction highs right there. So a little pop up would be nice because what that would do is confirm after reversal, that is pop up, turn back down, confirm, uh, give us a divergent high, which we don't have right now because we're just below this previous reaction high. So that would be the ideal scenario. Um, so, you know, I don't think the train has, well, it's safe to say the train hasn't left the station yet in the semi short and maybe this one doesn't pan out, but, uh, if it does, by the time all these report, if you start seeing these divergent highs confirm these stocks rolling over, I think there's going to be a very swift rush from, uh, rush for the exits and the, um, uh, semis. Uh, and I'd rather get in front of that one, at least with a partial position now. So if they start to melt down, I can add and I'll have a current position that's already profitable instead of trying to chase a big move down. Here's a quick look at the Qualcomm weekly. Look at, look at all the uh, resistance that it has here. Uh, going all the way back to 2012, a lot of reactions around that level. So uh, here's one at resistance and uh, you have uh, some potential divergence. So if the stock reverses soon, it will have negative divergence, uh, very overbought. The last time we were overbought, we're right here. You can see this huge drop in Qualcomm uh, from that point. And uh, again, we're overbought. We were overbought right here. Uh, you can see what happened at that from this overbought reading here. And this time we were overbought here, nice correction, overbought here, nice correction. So you get the point. Uh, the risk reward is just awful right now in these. I know the trend is strong, the trend is bullish, but uh, uh, these guys are going to reverse and they're going to you know, be good for you know gains measured well into the double digits. Their last one here is uh, Broadcom AVGO. Uh, looks like it's rolling over. There's so much here on this chart, but we had a divergent high right here and the stock has rolled over. It took out this 256.62 support. You can see that's a pretty well-defined level. A lot of reactions back here. So this one's now taken out support. Uh, next stop down here, 228 and change. And weekly chart. Here's one that's already broken down on the weekly. This is one of the few that we have a, a sell signal now. You can see this trend line going all the way back to early 2013. Here's all your divergent highs, 24% drop, 34% drop, this divergent high, and now a, a solid sell signal. Today is Friday. And what that means is if I'm trading off a weekly chart, I, I go on a weekly close. Um, barring some type of crazy stick save, uh, we're going to print a solid weekly close below this trend line on uh, Broadcom. So that one's already on a sell signal and I don't see any decent support till down here, 179.35. So even from where we're at today, we're looking at about a, a 28 or so percent drop in that one. And to wrap it up, this is SOXX, the uh, iShares Philips Sox Semiconductor ETF. Uh, there's the price channel I've been harping on. The midpoint of the channel is a blue line. We zoom in, we can see, you know, we had a, a divergent high here, 10% drop, and now a that was a minor divergent, very small divergent high right there. Now we have a what I call a major divergent high, uh, some pretty bearish action, action recently. We're up today, a little snapback rally due well, to Intel. But uh, this, what we need to see is this one take out the bottom of this channel here. That's a, a very significant and well-defined support line. And I've gone over the semis in, in other videos, including XSD and SMH, the two other semiconductor ETFs. And they are all have very similar uptrend lines that we need to watch. But there it is, negative divergence. And uh, these are the price targets for that trade. Oh, yeah, just, just you know, I, I like to hone in on my entries and exits on the 60-minute uh, charts. And this is what happened. Yesterday, we had a breakdown here uh, on the 60-minute chart. You can see we hit this support. I have support about 181, a little under 182. Uh, we reversed off that, and now we're back testing. So this is an objective short entry. I think today's pop due to Intel is uh, an objective short entry because that's a back test of the wedge. Watch for a break of 181-ish uh, level or yesterday's lows. And uh, I think we work our way lower, but I just wanted to point out that we had just like we did back here, and this was pointed out on the site. I pointed out at this, uh, we actually have some of those charts, but we had a 10% correction off this last divergent high right here. And I expect, you know, at least that, if not more, off this most recent divergent high. 
Okay, let's wrap it up here. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it.